Hi, it's Gigi. Let's start this rant. And yes, I'm taking my braids out. That's why I cut it. But let's go ahead and talk about this Teen Mom OGs. So we start the episode off with Mackenzie. I don't watch Mackenzie scenes. I said that in the last video, so no idea what's going on. Next, we go to Caitlyn. Caitlyn basically reveals she finished training about six months ago and now is starting to do the eyebrows that she trained for. Why did it take six months? Was she just waiting on the cameras? This is going to be another passion project that gets dumped on the sideway. But anyways, she puts a blast tweet out, gets a whole bunch of appointments. And we'll talk about that in the next scene of hers. Then next, we go to Cheyenne. She, um, Corey already left for the challenge. Um, her sister is moving to Maryland to be with the baby daddy. If you saw my last post on Teen Mom, you could tell the sister is currently heavily pregnant, actually. So I guess the move to D.C., Maryland, did some wonders. So she's discussing with her sister how it's been challenging being pregnant in COVID and how much Zach is missing out. He can't come for the ultrasounds, which has kind of been frustrating him. Understandably, this is his first biological child, so... He probably wants to catch all the special moments, all the moments, whether it's special or not, you know. So she reveals that she booked a private ultrasound session and she's looking forward to surprising Zach with it and inviting some of the other family. Then we go to Macy and you guys know right, the Edwards family were basically fired. So she can't really do a lot of talking about them, but we get to Macy. She's complaining about how all the kids have sports. Jade is in softball, had a tournament the same weekend as Bentley, who is basically doing his own sports. He has plays golf and he does traveling, I think baseball, not softball for Bentley. So Taylor was taking Bentley for his game and she's taking Jade for her game. And it was, we find out that it's also Taylor's birthday weekend and she's not going to be able to spend it with her. Which is like a bone of contention, like, you know, she's missing all this family times and especially with Benny because it was just him, Benny in the beginning, but life happens, people grow up, people do different things in their lives and that's just what it is. Um, then let's see. Then we find out Jen and Larry were actually at Benny's game, which, uh, which they didn't know. So the Edwards kind of are out, but not really. Then Amber informs the producers that school is going well. She's really excited. She's kind of upset that her fake tears to her niece, as Grace Report recalls her, did not work. I think Amber is missing the fact that, yes, you went to jail the first five years or whatever you did initially when she was born. It was drug-related. You came out. You claimed you were California sober. Good. I think Leah can forgive that. And I think she did because Leah had moments with you, you know, but through the years, we saw you basically put one relationship after the other in front of Leah, which cannot be easy. It's like, I'm looking at you as supposed to be my mom. You already missed so much out of my childhood. Then the time you have the opportunity and the means to be there, you're not there. And I think Amber equates her financially, maybe helping paying child support as the same thing as being there physically, like it's family members, like kids can take a man not being there, like a father not being there, but a mom not being there, that's a whole mental disaster. So, and Amber just doesn't want to acknowledge this. Anyways, and she says she's waiting for Gary to apologize for her for not picking up her calls. You went on social media and blasted he and his wife, like apologize for what? Have you apologized for your madness? Like Amber frustrates me and it's kind of like denial, just not being able to look in the mirror and seeing what you're doing, what your part is in the, in the situation. And that's very annoying because now she's 30 plus. So we're no longer seeing moms. We've grown. We've had experiences that should help us. So the excuse of just not knowing or being ignorant is no longer acceptable. But that's where we are. And Gary's trying to see baby james not sure why maybe leah i'm hoping leah wanted to see the baby james because if it was just gary trying to bring amber back in the life then that is dysfunctional because basically you guys are ignoring leah's feelings and now amber is back in her life without her permission i know she's a kid and kids should stay in kids places but this little child has been scarred for years and years so if she's saying 
I'm not ready to interact with this woman. That should be respected. So I am hoping the whole baby James thing coming over was because Leah wanted to see him, not because they just wanted to make nice with Amber for the cameras. So we get to Cheyenne. They're all in the car. Zach is driving to the ultrasound, but he doesn't know where he's going. And Cheyenne is trying to keep it a surprise. It was a cute little scene. Then Kaylee finally does her microblading blast. Went crazy. And now she's freaking out. She's booked for five months. We're happy to see it, though. Then we get back to Amber. And um, let me see. She's talking about like going over and being excited to see Leah. She's like, I don't care if she wants to see me. I want to see her. Again, is the lack of accountability. Like you should care if she wants to see you, you know? And I know every room was not built in the day and these issues are not going to be fixed. But it's just the lack of empathy, the lack of vision, seeing what your daughter needs and giving it to her that is just missing in Amber. But I guess they want to sweep things under the rug like they always do till the next episode when Amber goes off. We'll see. Then Macy is at home. Jade is practicing her reading. She reads beautifully. I, don't, I can't remember how old she is, but for whatever age she is, she's reading at a, at, at a good pace. Then she's like talking about how her and Bentley used to be to them together. And they do flashbacks, which is like, you know, very emotional because it really used to be them against the world, you know, before Taylor came in and became like a awesome stepfather and everything. And she kind of blames Taylor. Like you took my Benny away, which I know is like a joke because obviously she's happy Bentley has some kind of father figure while his own biological dad struggles with his drug addiction. Then we go to Cheyenne. Cheyenne's whole family is in the ultrasound. I just love her family. I love the closeness. I love how pretty everybody is in Cheyenne's scenes. Like everybody's attractive. Mom, dad, uncle, brothers, everybody looks good. Even the new guy they're introducing as the sister's boyfriend in Maryland is good looking too. So I'm like, everyone is beautiful in this family. Like y'all did that. So we see Zach. Zach is so happy to see the 4D ultrasound, which shows great features on the baby's face. And we find out the baby looks like shy, but Zach is a little jealous. He's like, well, he got a member, so mm, he could look like you, but he's a boy. He's my boy, which is a cute little scene with them. Then we go back to Caitlin. She did have one eyebrow successfully and now she's talking about opening a center for microblading i'm like why do you have to always jump the gun like you could take things in a slow pace and i'm happy she has the funds and is able to do big things like buying a horse randomly buying a baby pig randomly and every other thing she's done impulsively well, God damn, like it took you six months to do one eyebrow and now you think you want to buy a center. Caitlin has a problem with commitment when it comes to work. Like, I don't think she wants to work. I think she, she thinks the world wants her to work. So she tries to come up with this, you know, things that she, she considers easy to get done. You know, she tried to be a veterinary assistant and the advice that she needed a whole bunch of school and that turned her off and that was like a whole thing and now she's finished microblading and i went to her instagram so i know she's doing it i don't know if she's doing enough for her to buy a place or rent a place out i think she should still work under the lady and if it's something she's really committed to then you could expand but caitlin calm down you've done one eyebrow in six months that should tell you this is not something you might want to commit to but I digress. Then we have a Mackenzie scene again. Don't know what's going on here. Then Amber tells us about the visit with baby James that happened off camera because of the agreement with her, the baby father for James, which I'm happy happened off camera because I think Leah also needed it to happen off camera. So she's not being micromanaged or being viewed and she's not under a microscope, you know? So she says it was awkward with Leah, which interpretation Leah probably ignored her but but she never acknowledges her part in the problem she just hopes things kind of get better and I'm like they might get better but if we don't address them then are we really moving forward you know I don't know with everything is not up for discussion but when you hurt your child to the level that I think Leah is hurt I think it begs for you to 
come forward, even if it's with a therapist, because these are difficult conversations. Acknowledge your part because basically every time Amber had a boyfriend, she didn't have time for Leah. And that's a fact. It's documented on television. So the fact that she just kind of sweeps that under the rug and she's all putting it in a thing like, oh, she says I haven't been there for her for 12 years. Well, I was arrested. I had drug problems, this and that. You did, but you recovered from those things and you still didn't choose her. That's what the problem is. That is it, Amber. Address that, apologize, and show change behavior. And then maybe she might listen to you. But anyways... Then we go back to Cheyenne to close out the episode and her and Zach in the baby's room. They're looking at the picture. They finally acknowledge that, yes, it does look like Cheyenne. But I'm like, the baby wins anyway. Both of you have good genetics. If the baby looks like you or Shy, the baby's going to be gorgeous. So I don't know what we're fighting about. Then they're happy to show the baby to Ryder. We didn't see Ryder this whole scene, which I wonder if she's with Corey or something. But Corey is in... MTV land during his challenge. So I don't know where Ryder was. But they're excited to show the pictures to Ryder. And I'm also excited to see what she says. Being like a big sister. Well, she's already a big sister, but to a boy this time. So yeah, that was my rant on MTV's Teen Mom OG. Um, tonight, I may do Beverly Hills Housewives later on tonight versus tomorrow morning. But look out for that. Thank you. Like, subscribe, share. We're trying to grow the channel.